Frank, Frankie. Come in, man. Stephanie's. Billy Ninja, Archie. I know this is a definite legendary DJ. Hope yeah, you guys know that. Right. If you know anything about DJ, you better know this brother right here. Right. I'm not a speaker, so I have to say, without y'all, it won't be no Camacho. Because I see everybody in here from the Wild Fish days, the choices. Y'all names. I ain't seen y'all guys in ages. It's been about, about 15 years now. It's seen that before. We're gonna put this down now, all right? Everybody back up, please. Pass this no, one. I'm gonna take this, we'll take this right here. All right, we'll keep it tight. We're gonna start this off with uh, Archie Bravo. Here we go.
cold, feeling it. All right? Just feeling it. And you guys, mark this in your mind. This brother here, right here. All the brothers you respect from the house scene, Khalif, me, E. Joe, everybody done learned something from this man from back in the day. This, this brother back in the world, in the tunnel, when we all, we didn't know what we was doing, we was watching this brother get down, you know? Definitely respect, you always remember this brother. A lot of our styles still got him in us. My man, Ron Paisley. Yeah. This brother goes back. Locking, popping, house, hip hop. Um, let's bring this in. Shake. A lot of brothers, people don't know. Shakey Shake, right here. K1. K1. Before we get this started, I think I'm gonna let everybody get, tell my mouth is running too much right now. I'm gonna let everybody get a little say on the mic, how they got into the house scene. And if y'all feel free, ask some brothers some questions. I know a lot of y'all want to know, remember our old school gear we used to have on, the lives and all that. Feel free to ask questions now, because I'm gonna tell you, I don't know. I came in and seen people wearing it, and I was like, let me get up on this right now, you know. Ask these brothers right here. Let's start off with Archie. All right, how y'all doing tonight, all right? Yeah. yeah. Well, check it out. I'll make it short and sweet. Um, uh, for some of us, uh, this kind of thing has been a lifestyle. Um, the general uh, information is, after the age 25, you won't be doing this kind of stuff. If, uh, yeah, I'm 40. You know? <laughs> you know? So, um... <laughs> On a serious tip, it's, it's all about the music itself, you know? It's about the music, it's about the vibe, it's about the flavor. You need not necessarily get too involved in drugs to fuck yourself up, and then later on regret the shit later. You know what I'm saying? So, in other words, keep the spirit alive, keep the spirit going. You know, um, you may not have a job, you may be down, but they can't take your dance from you, and they can't take your music from you, all right? So keep it strong, keep it positive, keep it real. Okay? All right. Thank you. How y'all doing? Oh. Into the <laughs> My name is Bravo. I've been doing this shit for 28 years. Stuff and I told him something like 1974. Oh, wow. I want to say that I'm, I'm very impressed by the fact that I see now we have a lot of different gender people. A lot of the women are going crazy. I like that. A lot of Orientals, a lot of whites. So it has no color. The music is the music. It's not what you hear, it's what you feel. I know when I do that shit, I put an extra step in there just for who's watching. I like to say I thank Brian very much that he notices what's going on and he wants to keep it together. As you all can see or think about it, what we are doing right here is a dance caucus. Everybody in here throws the fuck down. This is what I consider a religion. It's what you create. We all come here, we family, we bump into each other. You don't even have to say you're sorry because you know he didn't mean whatever the hell he did. It was a step. So that's what it's all about. It's the feeling. Today's Monday. We are all here. Monday. Monday. It was never like it used to be. Monday's always fucking Monday. All right? And we in here cutting it up. That's important. We don't wait till Saturday to do it up. We don't wait till Friday to do it up. We don't wait till after work to do it up. 
we always doing it up. That's what's on our mind. We party, we live together. This is what we do. We love it, yo. Yes. We love it. So I'd like for y'all to just give Mr. Brian a hand. The reason why I say that is because a lot of you just party in New York. A lot of us here have done it in a lot of different countries. We've gotten paid just to put the fuck down. And that's very important. Because at one time or another, you say, man, I wish I ain't had to pay $25 to get in this motherfucker. I wish I ain't had to pay $5 to get in this motherfucker. Everybody want to get on the guest list. But we have gotten paid doing this, and maybe it's because of the efforts of possibly Mr. Willie Ninja. Or even Archie, because he's, he's got the nerve to teach classes in Holland, Paris. We've done some shit in Vienna together. I mean, these places, you know, you gotta look on the map to see where this shit is at. You know, we didn't go to Canada. We talking, and, you know, think about it. You know, the feeling is there. Everybody want to do what we're doing. So in other words, we're doing it right. Don't just keep that in mind. And I just want to say one thing before I stop and let somebody else get this mic. It's Monday. Okay. Why am I going down in the light? Okay, I'm the youngest one of the trio. Shut up, Rob. Um, I started in the 70s too, but I'm not going to go tell you when. No, I'm not going to tell. I start. Why? Right. Okay, I started about 75. Um, I started with different st uh, styles of dancing, and you know, I was thanks to my mom and uh, taking me to the Motown reviews and just doing every type of dance there was to do that was popular at the time. And then, as everybody knows me, my little claim to fame is voguing. I started that in 1980. Um, it's been doing that now for what is it, 19, 20 years, twisting up the arms. Um, I, and as they said, I have toured the world, but many, there's a lot of people in here also that have danced in many countries and cities and done commercials and everything with their talent, natural abilities. I'm not just talking about what they learned in school, but I'm talking about what they learned in the street or what they learned in clubs. Um, and as you notice in here tonight, it has bridged many barriers. It has bridged racial. It is bridge sexual and gender because there's everybody up in this house tonight and I like it when it's a mixed crowd because you know the mindset is on one thing only it's all about dance it's about bringing everybody together not pulling them apart but pulling them together no matter what your differences are you lose it when you're in the club listening to the music and that's all I got to say thank you um, for coming and just keep on trucking on, as we used to say in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. You guys are street food. Shit. Shit. How's everybody doing? You know, on the way down, well, first off, let me give uh, all praise due to our Father who in heaven. And I want to just, I want to thank him and keep him first, first for, you know, in my life, because without him, ain't nothing possible. Right. And none of us would be here, because, you know, a lot of, lot of folks, you know, they get to a certain place in time, and they, they forget that, you know, and they start hogging up the glory, and they start looking at themselves, and they had a little bit of contribution to whatever they did, and they forget the reason why they could do what they did, why they was blessed to have that talent or whatever have you, you know? Um, 
Next, I want to I want to big up and shout out all of the players that played and never got paid. And um, it's been long overdue, you know. And uh, you know, I'm I'm standing here for them. I feel like I gotta carry the torch, you know, and spread the the truth. Not the, 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 the fallacies and the, you know, all the, the purpose. a lot of perpetrating in the, in the music business. And a lot of people talk about, oh, we real, and we keeping it real, and they all fake it. <laughs> I remember back in the days when dancing was universal, and it wasn't called it Lofton. Because the name of the Loft, Lofton didn't come till after the Loft. I remember when it was called freestyle dancing. Yeah. And I was the kid, I was the baby at that time. Now when my brother was DJing in 1970, you know what I'm saying, I used to be able to get up into places that other kids wouldn't be able to get up into just because my brother was the DJ. You know what I'm saying? And music was universal, and I seen dancing. And the dancing and the music wasn't an enemy of the other dance and the music. Wasn't no, no, was no music, no enemy. It wasn't no we house dancing. That wasn't even a, a term anyway. Like I said, they were they was freestyling, and brothers was wicked. And it wasn't no uh, we freestyling over here, and we ain't with that b boying. And, and, and y'all can't hustle, we ain't, we ain't with that hustle. And y'all, y'all, y'all house dancing, but we got a, a hustle thing going on here. It wasn't none of that back then. All this separation and division that we learned and it's trickling down into the music, is BS. You know what I'm saying? You are. I watched them circles, I watched them take turns, I, I watched them do the hustle, I watched them freestyling, I watched them b-boying, rocking, and whatever have you. Whatever they could do, they was doing it. You know what I'm saying? We might have waited our turn, we might have waited for the, you know, the freestyling, th that part of the freestyling, then we started just straight b-boying, or the hustlers came in, they started hustling, but we did it all. And one block party. One jam, and the whole neighborhood was together. I'm sorry for being a little long with it, but I got so much locked up in me and so much to tell. I hear brothers in this day and time saying, uh, I'll go to Kuhur, or I'll go to Africa Bad Baba, and I asked them. So you just told me right there that you wasn't there. Because you got to go to them to ask them. See, you front. But I just want to be realistic. I don't want to keep it real. I want to be realistic. I want to, I remember, I remember a lot of b-boys and the moves they did. You know, because I used to, I used to b-boy. I see, I never thought that I would say this out of my mouth. But gay people had the ultimate contribution on dance and music. Yeah. Now your preference is your business. I need a woman, because I'm, I'm all masculine. Right? As they say, I, I, I ain't gonna knock your hustle. That's your business. But I just want to recognize your contribution, because I think a lot of them that was getting down, they, they, you know, they, they ain't being pr properly talked about or represented. And they got the ultimate contribution. Because I, I want to let y'all know something. When I was a kid, I used to be in, on Morningside Park every day, b-boying my heart out. But one day when I was in the park, I was watching this dude. I, I knew what he was, but that didn't faze me because his dancing had me hypnotized. <laughs> he was gay. The brother was gay. But the brother was, 
he was getting down like, man, nigga, listen, pardon, my, pardon, pardon the phrase, but he was getting down like, man, nigga, listen. <laughs> and he, he, he did this move. He did this move. That, be, that, that, that move that he did, when I seen that, I mean, he was getting down for a while. That's when it was for freestyle. But when he did that move right there, that became the move that assassinated a lot of brothers. <laughs> I took that move home and I killed brothers. When I seen that, when my man went down and did the chin freeze, my eyes froze, they got this big. When I see him doing that freestyle dance, and he did that, and he, he did the he spun around and freeze on his chin, and both his legs was dangling over his head, I had to have that move. <laughs> and I was killing brothers, Bronx, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Queens, and Staten Island with that move. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell y'all something. You know, we, you know my man Ron Paisley right here? My man, we done seen Ice and Kojak. These are some original DJs that played Cedar Park. The original Mr. Magic. We ain't talking about that Mr. Magic y'all heard in the 80s. We talking about the original Mr. Ma Black Jack and all them. Ice, Kojak. Ice, all of them. And remember all of them, tell me, all them original B-Boys? Remember, see, Herc started in front of his building. And then he trickled down to Cedar Park. See, a lot of people don't know that. They just talk about Herc and the mighty Hercules of Cedar Park. You know what I'm saying? Herc started in front of 1600. You know what I'm saying? And um, that this brother right here, go, he go back. Because we was the baby's b-boy at that time. You know what I'm saying? And you know what? I'm waiting for the real panel where they say the so-called hip-hop and all the old school b-boys so we could talk about the moves and where they came from, because I still remember where they came from. I ain't gonna blow it up now. I ain't gonna blow it up now. But when we get on that panel, with all them so-called b-boys, because I'm a, I'm a b-boy from back in the days that taught b-boys everywhere and ain't get the credit for them. All them cats that burned in the 80s that call themselves old school, they was new to me, because when the 80s scene rolled around, you know what I'm saying? I was tired of b-boying because we did it all throughout the 70s. So I needed something new. Woo. We locked and b-boyed, you know what I'm saying? But I was tired of that because I, I needed something new. But I think the truth about all that got to be told. All the moves, all the TV shows we watched, what, what stars we watched and what moves they did, which became the, 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 it became that freeze or that certain move. They had names and they came from certain places. Some came from WWF, the original Worldwide Federation Wrestling. <laughs> and I'm gonna blow it up. I'm gonna talk about the wrestlers that did the move, the basketball players that did those moves that we did when we be boy. You know what I'm saying? I wanna, I wanna, I wanna you know, shine the light. Cause like I said, you know, not to be long, I'm sorry to be long winded, but a lot of brothers run around with the credit and they front. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Right. And they wasn't there. They came at a certain point in time, and everybody decide the, they they deserve you know for what they they contribution. But I always like to give the elders the respect due, because if it wasn't for them, it wouldn't be us. That's right. If it wasn't for the elders before them, it wouldn't have been them. That's right. But when they gonna get the when all them players that that played and never got played gonna get the credit? Okay. When they gonna talk about Rock Master Formula and the H2 Brothers high quality? When they gonna talk about? Casting them before they was the cold crush. You know what I'm saying? I remember what see secrets. Hey, remember, 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 rem
Atlantic hero because he was their first official DJ. Ah, right. And he was official because he was rolling up with the brothers. And they got him nice. You know what I'm saying? But, um, man, you know, I could, I could talk about it. You know what I'm saying? You know, hey, big up to my man K1, he in the house. We ain't gonna forget K1. This guy influenced us. I know it. The guys that just talk, wait, 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 wait. The guys that just talk must have influenced them. Hey, I'm gonna explain it to y'all. They wanna make you think I'm like the dance king. But what it was is I was homeless, so I was going to clubs every night. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. But what it was, we went to parties seven days a week. Now, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit younger than Archie and Willie and them, and a little bit older than this group. So I was the in-between, like the medium for both sides. Like I hung out with all the different crews. So I brought, kind of brought different groups of people together from all the different boroughs. And because I went out all the time, I kind of did steps that became common, and then people took them and turned them into their own styles and whatever, 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 whatever. And like you, like you said, it's true. It wasn't house music. It was straight freestyle, then it turned into loft in. Before the loft, like you said, nobody was going down there. The floors was all crooked. It was like 10 people in the place. You know what I'm saying? That's how it was. That's right. So, so thank you. Freestyle. Thank you. It was, just, it was you know, so it, the music, I don't, I would say after the tunnel and maybe the palladium, the music took on a kind of life of itself. We wasn't listening to Colonel Abrams anymore. Because that's what it was. It was the funk, that kind of stuff. They started making tracks and it became house music and it became commercialized. And I want to give thanks to Brian because he's trying to just keep it real, keep the history of it real, keep everybody understanding, like, you know, don't let all this stuff cloud you, make you think it originated here or this is this or this crew or that crew. And especially to the young guys, I think he's just trying to tell the younger generation, you know, do that dance, but love that music, man. Don't do it because you just want to be popular or you just want to be like, I'm going to go to Japan and make some money and whatever.